Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I am JCM Byrne, author of Wistful Ascending and the rest of the Hybrid Helix, and this is Book Burning, a show where I plan to talk about all sorts of book-related topics, but I promise to never ever burn a book. For today's episode, I did something unprecedented in the long and storied history of this show. I conducted a Twitter poll to decide the topic for the episode. Now, as you know, as we learned from Elon Musk not too long ago, Twitter polls are legally binding, so I have to abide by the results. Weirdly, there was a tie. So my, I had uh, voters choose between three topics, and two of them got exactly 28 votes each, which is weird, but I'm going to have to go with that. Uh, as a tiebreaker, I decided to go with who had left, com which, uh, which choice had comments supporting it. And a couple people asked specifically for this topic in comments, so I'm doing this video first, and I will do the other video a little bit later, probably very soon because I like talking about these things, and I hope you enjoy hearing my thoughts. So today's topic is the definition of hard and soft science fiction. People talk about science fiction, you may have heard them use these terms, this is hard sci-fi, this isn't, they may have said this is a positive or a negative, and I'm going to go into some detail about what those words mean and hopefully make it clearer for you, the consumer. Some people have asked for this, so why not? <clears throat> now, I've got good news and I've got bad news about these terms. I'm going to start with the bad news, because that's what I do. The bad news is the terms hard and soft science fiction are used in two completely different and incompatible ways by different people. Um, so some people mean one thing by hard and soft science fiction, and some people mean something completely separate. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is neither of these uh, uh, dimensions or neither of these usages of these terms is particularly difficult to understand. So we can cover it all in one video, and I think you'll find um, that it's not that hard to, to comprehend, it's not that hard to distinguish, and if you're talking to someone and they say, I really like hard sci-fi, I really like, you can usually suss out which of these uh, ideas they mean when they say that. You can figure out what they're talking about. And I think you'll find that uh, the, the, the one that's not in Wikipedia is actually the one that's most commonly used. So, uh, let's get started. Um, before I get into, into those definitions, I want to go back a bit in case you didn't see my first video about what science fiction is. Let's say that first. What is science fiction? So we have this large umbrella, this idea of genre fiction. Genre fiction is just stories where impossible things happen from the point of view of the author. Uh, so, what are impossible things? Dragons flying around. Uh, spaceships flying from uh, uh, place to place, laser swords, um, anything that we can't encounter in our everyday life, couldn't encounter in our everyday life. That's All that is genre fiction, fantasy, sci-fi, a lot of horror, anything supernatural, genre fiction. What is science fiction? Science fiction is a subset of genre fiction in which those impossible things are attributed to advanced technology as opposed to magic. So, um, if you have your plucky hero running down a corridor, chased by dastardly bad people, pulls out a blaster, you know, a thing that's clearly made in a factory out of parts we sort of understand, shoot and shoots, you know, blaster bolts at the, uh, at the, the bad guys, that's science fiction. If our plucky hero is running down a corridor, chased by dastardly villains, pulls out a wand, perhaps chance and incantation, in a language that's dead to the author, and a lightning bolt flies out, or a hex, or a fireball, and roasts or hexes his enemies, that's fantasy. And it doesn't really have to be more complicated than that. You know, fantasy tends to be in a medieval setting, but not always. Science fiction tends to be in a futuristic or alien setting, but not always. However, they have this common commonality, which is sci-fi is saying these amazing things are due to tech technology, which works in certain ways, and the fantasy is saying these amazing things are not. They're due to magic. You can combine them. You can have stories with both. I talked about this. I write stories with both side by side. Uh, Marvel Universe, you have Iron Man in a suit he built in a shop, fighting literally shoulder to shoulder with Doctor Strange, tossing uh, wizardly spells at his enemies. That's science. You can call that science. I like to call that science fantasy. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's part of either science fiction or fantasy. It's more just where they intersect. Okay, so that's science fiction. Science fiction says we have impossible things happening. We know they're impossible. The author is acknowledging that and saying we're pretending that it is possible and it's due to advances in technology. And there's a 
I don't have to give you examples. I think there's so much science fiction in the world that's such a big part of our culture, it's easy to think of limitless examples. <clears throat> Okay, so now hard versus soft science fiction. I'm gonna give you the less useful definition first. Um, the less useful definition is based on the a, a distinction between hard and soft science. Don't get mad. There's lots of people who think this distinction is false, that it's not useful, that it doesn't help anybody. I'm not arguing that it's a good distinction. I'm saying people do use the terms. It's worth understanding what they mean, even if you disagree with the underlying concept. So what are the uh, hard sciences? Hard sciences are sciences, I hate to say it, but the ones we think of, like par the most paradigmatic hard science, something like astronomy, things where measurements are taken, very specific predictions can be made, very specific mathematical models can be created, physics, astronomy, chemistry. Um, you know, when you add a certain amount of an acid to a certain amount of a base in a, in a test tube, you know what pH you're going to get. You can calculate it precisely uh, to as many significant figures as you want. Um, when you study astronomy, uh, we can make very specific predictions. Oh, like a year from now, where's that star going to be in the sky at this date, at this time? We can calculate that very precisely. Um, those are the hard sciences, and those are probably the more respected sciences. I'm not saying they should be more respected, but they are. The soft sciences um, tend to be the ones with more subjective terms. They use more values. They tend to be about people. They tend to have fewer experiments. It's more about observing, making more general predictions, less specific ones, something like sociology. Sociology can't tell us if, given a certain kind of upbringing and background, a particular person will graduate from college. Sociology can tell us if that person is more or less likely to graduate from college, depending on those factors, but it can't tell us of anything about a specific, but it's not making specific uh, detailed uh, predictions from sociology. Psychology, same thing. Psychology can tell us um, you know, a lot about from on a population level how certain uh, th th things impact people's behavior, but it can't tell us if a particular person upon seeing a particular commercial will go out and buy a particular box of cookies. Can't make that kind of prediction with psychology. So psychology and sociology, uh, the sciences that study people, the sciences that have uh, less precise predictive uh, power are called soft, and the hard sciences, uh, the others, I'm sorry, the other sciences, the ones that have more predictive power, generally more based on math, more about physical objects like rockets, called hard. And so from that, we get this very simple uh, understanding. What uh, hard science fiction is science fiction where the science that the scientific advances in the setting are in the hard sciences. So if you have a world where people have developed rockets that can travel far out into the reaches of the solar system to mine asteroids or whatever you want to do out there, um, that would be a hard science fiction in this understanding of the term. And a soft science fiction would be a world where the soft sciences had developed and advanced. I'm trying to think of good examples of this and I'm having a slightly hard time. Maybe Dune, uh, where this um, uh, certainly this understanding that that people have developed psychology and related disciplines to such a point that they have more predictive power and it's about the effects of that advance on a society. You can say Dune is in some ways about that. Um, another example might be, you, may, you could probably argue that the psychohistory in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series is soft science fiction in this sense because it's about uh, psychology and history uh, being advanced to a point where uh, the, the actions of populations can be predicted very accurately. So it's an advance. It's advanced. It's stuff that you can't do. It's impossible. It's science fiction. Uh, Asimov's Foundation also has hard science fiction element. It has like, you know, spaceships and stuff in it as well. So it's, these are mixed together. So that's one sense of hard versus soft science fiction. Hard science fiction has uh, 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 advances in technology that are based on advances in the hard sciences, physics, uh, uh, chemistry, uh, astronomy, um, while... Um, uh, soft science fiction is based on advances in the soft sciences, psychology, sociology, uh, history, I don't know, things like that. And that is a way to use these terms. I think it's much less common and it's not super useful. Uh, it's also somewhat pejorative. Many people who work in the so-called soft sciences, and this is why I want to apologize for starting with this, um, many people who work in these fields feel um, the, the, these terms are meant to put them down. Soft sciences are somehow lesser, that sociology is lesser than physics. I'm not interested in getting into this argument on either side uh, because that would be a whole other video and a whole other series and I don't know that I'm qualified to talk about this. It's not something I think about a ton. Um, 
So you will see these, this, these terms used this way. I think it's less common. I think it's less useful. And there is relatively less um, fiction, in my understanding, that is soft in this sense. It's not as common. It happens. Maybe I'm just not reading much of it. I don't know. Um, but it does exist. And, but the, so, so, so we're going to set that aside. This is one way of using these terms. It, it's out there. It's not the most common. It's not the most useful. Now, put that aside. So what's the... Um, other type of um, uh, hard and soft science fiction. What is it about? And what this is, is the notion of, it, it hinges on the notion um, that I, I think I pulled this from Brandon Sanderson, uh, external validity. It's does, so, so in both hard and soft science fiction in the second sense, we have technology in the setting that does not exist in our world. Okay, it's stuff that we don't have. In hard science fiction, that stuff that it, those advanced technologies, those advanced um, uh, capacities seem like they might be possible based on our current understanding of the physical laws of the universe. And in soft science fiction, they are not. And I'll elaborate a little bit, although really that's the gist of it. So um, a good example is take a, 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 I don't want to give it a, so external validity means that the science is seems to match the world as we know it. And if something has external validity, the science seems to match the universe we live in. And if it doesn't have external validity, it doesn't seem consistent with the universe in one way or another, or in many ways. So uh, what's a really good example? There's really lots of them. Hard science fiction could be something like Andy Weir's The Martian. Uh, my understanding is he went to a lot of effort to uh, carefully and accurately predict what a mission to Mars might look like, what the actual real challenges are of living on Mars, of, of, of sustaining a colony there, what the rockets might look like that might go there in the near future. Hard science fiction. There's no warp drive, right? There's no gravity generators. As far as I know in The Martian, there are no elements in there that an actual scientist would say, that's just not possible. They would say, we can't do that now, right? They would say, we can't create this today. We don't have the technology yet, but it seems very feasible at some point in the future that we could, the same way that you know in the future, we'll have cell phones that are a little more powerful and a little slimmer than the cell phone that I'm filming this video on, right? That's a normal progression of technology. That's hard science fiction. Uh, pretty nice popular example, something maybe like Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park might not be perfect in this sense, but for the most part, the idea that we could find DNA from dinosaurs in amber, that does exist, that we could maybe use it to, as the basis for for creating uh, uh, rep uh, replica dinosaurs and have them run around in a park, that's pretty close to maybe possible. There's no obvious flagrant um, uh, violations of the laws of physics as we know them in Jurassic Park. I'm not, I'm not saying the execution is perfect, but it's pretty much pretty close to hard sci-fi. And that was the intent of the author. Um, I'm sure there's more hard sci-fi. I can't think of examples off the top. I'll think I'll come up, come back to another example a little bit later that's I think more more modern and also more interesting. Um, but let's talk about soft sci-fi. In soft science fiction, the creators have just decided, you know what? We're just going to postulate uh, technologies that, as far as we know, are just not possible. Can't happen. Would net would seem like they would never be possible because they break fundamental laws of physics as we know them. We're just going to toss that in there. What does that mean? Look at, like, Star Trek. At Star Trek, they can travel fast as ships, have warp drives, they can go faster than light, which lets them skip across from solar system to solar system, visiting all kinds of aliens. It's fantastic, right? Lovely. As far as we know, there's no basis in our understanding of physics that would allow a warp drive to exist. It's not possible. It's not just that we can't build one yet because it's, like, really tricky. It's not like, oh, the engineering's really hard. It's not just... No one can afford it, it'd be very large, it'd be very expensive. No, it's just not possible. Doesn't mean our understanding of the world is complete. Maybe there's something about the laws of physics we don't know yet. I'm sure there are things we don't know yet. I'm not saying no one will ever figure out a way to travel faster than light, but as far as we can tell right now, there's no actual basis in our scientific understanding of the universe that says this could be done one day. It's pure fiction, right? It's pure, people will say it's pure fantasy, but not in the sense in which I like to use the word fantasy. So in Star Trek, they're saying this is a machine, it's not magical, right? you're not sacrificing goats to a demon lord to like get the ship to go fast. 
It is technology. It's a machine. It's built. It's understood by the character. The characters understand it. They, they study the math of the warp drive in school. It's clearly a tech. The same way, you know, your, my cell phone is technology, even though I don't understand exactly how it works. People, I know people who do. Um, so we allow for this impossible thing to happen, and that's soft science fiction. What else is in Star Trek? Artificial gravity, right? The idea that the ship could have these plates in the floor that create gravity, that's not possible. You can't just create a gravitational field. You need a big mass to do that, and you need a planet. Or you, need, you can simulate gravity by having something spin, and you're standing on the inside, and as it spins, you get centripetal, either centripetal or centrifugal force, assuming, I can't remember which is which, pushes you to the outside, and it feels like gravity, but that's not actually gravity. That's a real physics thing. And if you see a show where the ships are tubes that spin, so that people get squeezed up against the inside, so they're not floating around, there's a good chance that that show is trying to be on the harder side of this continuum, this spectrum. And it is a spectrum. Um, there are certainly uh, shows and things where all of the science is really rigorous, where all the technology really seems possible. The Martian, pretty hard sci-fi. I would even say Jurassic Park that you can, on one end. Then there's stuff where um, the, the authors or the creators will postulate one or two breaks, like, okay, let's just pretend they have faster than light travel, but nothing else. In every other respect, we're gonna make, we're gonna stick to the laws of physics as we know them. Maybe that'd be in the middle, and there are stories where they just go, screw it, we don't care how anything works, we're gonna measure time in a distance unit, and we're gonna make a Star Wars thing. And that would be on, uh, more, all the way on the soft end of things. So that's hard and soft science fiction. In this second sense, the most popular sense is how people usually use the term, in my experience, hard science fiction is science fiction where the advanced technologies seem to conform to the laws of physics as we know them. Soft science fiction, the softer it is, the less they seem to conform to the laws of physics as we know them, but they're still pretending to be technologies and not magic. Um, and once you understand this distinction, you can, you know, you, the, the natural thing, of course, for someone like me is to go, well, you know, which is better? It's a terrible question. Don't ever ask that. It's not about better or worse. But uh, you will find that these two types of science fiction or things on either end of the spectrum help you tell different kinds of stories, better or worse. They lend themselves, they're just more suited to certain kinds of stories. I'll give you a simple example. A lot of science fiction is uh, cautionary. It's about, look, some of these technologies are advancing. They could cause real problems for us. They could be very disruptive to our world. Uh, you need, we need to be aware of that and, and, and take proper precautions or think about that before it happens. Um, and I'm, I, I forgot the name of, the, of a really good example of a book that does this, but it's a book where they're postulating like a near future where, um, where 3D printing has gone just a little bit better than it is now to the point where manufacturing has become massively decentralized and uh, micro economies are springing up all over the place. And I want to say it's a Chuck Wendig book, but I'm probably wrong, so I'm really sorry about that. And Chuck, if you ever listen to this and it's not you, uh, um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the, of the author and it's, it's slipping by me. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to say, look, we have these, we're on the verge of certain technological breakthroughs that will have a huge impact on society and this is what they might look like, you kind of need to write hard sci-fi, right? You don't want to have a thing, well, we're on the verge of this technological breakthrough, which is impossible, right? That's not going to ring true to your audience. If you're trying to warn people about the dangers of AI, um, you, your, your AI better be pretty close to what AIs actually are like, or else anyone in your audience who knows anything about AI or computers is going to go, you're warning me about something that doesn't make sense. And you can't warn people about, what if we have artificial gravity and all of a sudden you know, people are flying off into space? You know, like, that's not a real concern. You have to make your science fiction hard. You have to make your, your, your developments that you're warning people about seem like they could really happen because no one cares to be warned about a scientific development that doesn't seem possible, that doesn't make sense. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, there's a, it, it, it's much harder to tell certain kinds of space opera stories and stick to a hard science fiction uh, setting. So if you want your characters flying around from system to system, meeting all kinds of cool aliens and getting in trouble and getting out of trouble and wreaking havoc and having war scenes where battles happen across, you know, multiple star systems or galaxies, you kind of need to break the laws of physics to do that. Uh, you, can, you can have your characters traveling from system to system at relativistic speeds. 
they can never come back though because when they come back it's hundreds of years later your stories um i don't want to say they shrink but maybe i do want to say they shrink your stories become constrained by physics as we know it right if you want your characters to instantly communicate with each other across you know from star system to star system you know if you send a radio message to someone in alpha centauri they're not going to hear it for three and a half years that's just sorry so if you want um you know uh, an avengers type story where uh it's dudes trying to you know like like find these objects all over the galaxy and their your heroes are racing around to try to stop them and they're sending messages back and forth and they're flying from system to systems searching for infinity gems you're going to break the laws of physics because without faster than light travel like none of that story is going to work the way you want it to work. You're gonna have those characters aren't gonna be characters, they're gonna be many, many, many generations of characters. You're gonna have a very different kind of story. Nothing wrong with that kind of story, but it's very different. Um, starships uh, uh, look weird unless you have artificial gravity. Um, I'm sorry, uh, if you want people to stand on a deck and the ship is flat like a Starship Enterprise and it's not like spinning and it's not a cylinder, you need artificial gravity. Does artificial gravity make sense? No, it does not, but whatever, right? Uh, which is why artificial gravity and faster than light, artificial gravity, faster than light travel, and faster than light communication are probably the big three um, uh, um, impossible technologies that get postulated all the time in soft sci-fi. So that's soft science fiction. Um, uh, you know, there's other examples of things that, that fall under under soft science fiction of impossible technologies, and I'm blanking on examples right now. But that's the general idea. So is one better than the other? No. But you're telling different kinds of stories now. There is a sense in the science fiction field from many people, not everyone, many people, that the same way that the hard sciences are by many people valued over the soft sciences in that first sense, that is astronomy and physics are better than sociology and psychology, there's a sense that science fiction that sticks to the laws of physics as we know them, the closer it comes to that, the better it is. And there's certainly a style of science fiction story which is about near future technology, small advances that are plausible and how they might affect us. That's a wonderful kind of story to tell. I have nothing against that. Um, I would never say those stories are better. They are different. Um, they are more appealing to a certain audience and also less appealing to another audience. And, and I'm not even sure which audience is bigger, to be fair. Um, but when you write science fiction, when you consume science fiction, uh, different audiences will care differently about uh, how how accurate your science is, how close it conforms to reality. Um, some will allow for, some just don't care. Like, give me spaceships. I don't care where the air comes from. I don't care if it makes sense where the food comes from. Just give me a ship and have a cool battle where like lasers and shields. Shields are a great one, right? What's, it, what, what's, a, what's a force field? What's a shield in Star Trek? There's this shimmering energy barrier around the ship that just stops missiles from hitting the ship. What is that? I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't conform to any manifestation of energy that I can put my finger on, but yet we, we love that stuff, right? I, I love that stuff. I'm, I'm not putting anyone down. I love that stuff. Um, and I want to close with, um, if you haven't seen The Expanse or you haven't read The Expanse and you, you don't want spoilers, I don't know, skip ahead or something or stop the video, whatever you want. Expanse is a, one of my favorite ways to explain this distinction between hard and soft science fiction in that second sense. Because in The Expanse, if you look at all of the tech the Terran tech, the tech native to the solar system, it is very nicely done hard sci-fi, okay? They're postulating technologies that are impossible now, like ships that can go out to the outer rim and mine asteroids, but they really seem like what we might come up with someday in not too far future. They're based on the physics as we know it. They use systems of propulsion that we use now. They're better, they're more efficient, but they're the same concepts. Um, Gravity is a big issue on, in that series. The effects of lack of gravity on human physiology is really deeply explored in The Expanse. The Expanse does a really good job of trying to be hard sci-fi with all of the tech native to the solar system, all the human stuff. And you can tell the authors, I almost feel like, the, I don't know this, but I almost feel like they, they made it, they did it so much work on this so that we know, no, 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 we know what we're doing. But then as soon as they find the protomolecule, all the things the protomolecule does, throws all of that out the window. The alien technology basically operates on a whole different set of laws and does its own thing. Uh, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I think it's glorious, right? But there's this very, very powerful distinction. Porta molecule is soft sci-fi. It does ma it does not magical things. It's technolog technological things that violate the laws of physics as we know them. 
the solar tech, everything the Martians do, everything the Martians are just humans who have, or are living on Mars. They're not little green men. Um, everything the Martians have, all the, all the technology native to the solar system, it seems plausible. It seems like what people who sort of understand how rockets work think rockets might be in 200 years. You know, the better, faster, uh, larger, but the same basic principles of construction and of the way they move and of the way they maneuver um, matches our understanding. So um, that's a really lovely way to understand and to hammer home these distinctions is to look at something like the expanse. Looking at my notes, checking to see if there's anything else I wanted to say on this topic, and I don't think there is. Now, what I do when I write my world, I'm going to throw in a little bit about it, is a, is a, is a science fantasy. And so I literally have explicitly literally and explicitly magic in my world there's so someone might be have magic he might be flying using magic and at the same time be on a um, on a communicator that's technological so within the world it's usually I think I hope it's clear which things are magical and which things are advanced technology and I certainly have advanced technology stuff that's not possible so it's not hard sci-fi in any sense it's not hard sci-fi plus magic it's soft sci-fi plus magic and the soft sci-fi, though, I try to limit the amount, how soft it is. I try to break relatively few of the rules of physics as I know them. Uh, so we have, uh, well, there's no faster than light uh, mechanical uh, travel. Uh, it doesn't exist, but there is faster than light communication because I just say, oh, low energy tachyons. Do I know enough physics to really know if you could have a, a tachyon radio? I don't know, but it sounds good. Tachyons are actually real particles that do actually travel faster than the speed of light. I'm sure if some physicist would tell me that what you're saying doesn't actually make sense, that's fine. It sounds fancier than just FTL radio, which is the alternative. Um, so that's what I do, and I find it compelling. Um, and as a reader, you are free to say, I care about violating as few laws of physics as possible, or you're free to say, I don't care at all. Just throw me into a story. It's fine. Uh, but it will help if you know your boundaries because you'll find that certain properties are going to interest you more or less depending on where you stand on what bothers you. Okay, uh, what bothers me a lot more is internal consistency, right? If you have uh, postulated advanced technology or the people using it consistently from scene to scene where they should be using it. If they're not, that bugs me a lot. I'll give you my Star Trek example. Um, if they have a holodeck, they have a machine on a ship that can project uh, um, uh, things created basically out of thin air that are solid and can inflict harm because they're solid, right? They can have, then why do we have security officers running in with, with, with phasers to stop and like an invasion when they could just holodeck a bunch of, you know, soldiers who are not real to stop the invade? Like that kind of thing bugs me. If it doesn't bug you, that's fine. Enjoy your Star Trek, okay? I'm not trying to tell you not to. So hard and soft science fiction, a quick recap. You've got two kinds, two completely different. One is science fiction based on hard and soft sciences. I'll put those in scare quotes because not everyone likes those distinctions. So you can have science fiction which is hard based on changes, advances in physics and chemistry, soft which is advances in uh, psychology and sociology, those kinds of things. It's just, again, it's a loose definition. That's not typically how people use the term. The much more common usage is hard versus soft science fiction. Hard science fiction is advanced technology that seems to, as far as we can tell, conform to the laws of physics as we know them. And soft science fiction, not so much. We're allowing our, our stories, our tech might break some laws and we're saying, eh, it's fine. We have artificial gravity, it's fine. Just enjoy it. So that's hard and soft sci-fi. Uh, you might have your favorite, you might not care. I don't know, but those are useful distinctions for me when I read and when I think about science fiction and when I judge it. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you know what to do next. And if you don't by now, I'm not going to tell you. Um, I hope you read my books uh, by Wistful Ascending and all the sequels. Uh, only two right now, but hopefully another one coming soon. And uh, take care and read some good books, whether they're science fiction or not.